weather to start the work week. Look at video from Robin Wyatt in Currituck County when storms ripped through the region this morning, bringing down trees, sparking warnings. The 13 News Now team is on top of the situation. Tim Pandages has an update on the forecast while Allie Weatherton looks at the storm damage and Megan Shin is looking into a scary crash caused by the wind. And let's start with meteorologist Tim Pandages. Good afternoon. Yeah, yeah, good afternoon, Jan. Let's start with the wind today. Peak wind gusts were very exceptional, extraordinary amounts here. A uh, 68 miles per hour, the highest gust in Norfolk International. In fact, Cape Henry came in at 73 miles an hour earlier today, 56 miles an hour in Eden Tip. Now, most recently, it's still very windy out there. Gusts up and over 30, 35, even over 40 miles per hour at Norfolk and a recent gust of 33 miles an hour in Elizabeth City. High wind warnings remain in effect until 6 o'clock this evening in the areas in pink. Wind advisories back inland until until five o'clock, still potential of seeing gusts up to 50 miles an hour. Now, when do the winds finally calm down? That's the big question. It's been windy yesterday and all day today. Well, overnight tonight, those winds gradually do diminish and shift direction, and that's going to bring in some cooler air as we head into the next couple days. 80 degrees outside. There's actually a bit of a heat index. It feels like 81 because we have dew points that are in the 60s. It feels like late June, early July out there. 79 in Newport News, 75 out in Hertford, 82 now in Williamsburg, 78 in Elizabeth City. Radar is now quiet after a very, uh, very action packed morning and that has all moved off to the east. Skies have cleared on out and we're going to see a pretty nice after rest of the afternoon and early evening with clearing skies building back in. We'll talk about the cooler air coming our way for tomorrow and Wednesday and more rain chances too in just a few minutes. Jen. All right, Tim, thank you. Well, the damage from this morning's storm is widespread and pretty bad in some spots. Oh my goodness, look at that pickup truck crashed under a tree that came down in Thalia in Virginia Beach. Go to 13newsnow.com slash vote and tell us what you're dealing with. 13 News Now reporter Allie Weatherton is live in that neighborhood now. And Allie, what else are you seeing? Well, Janet, I have to tell you, tree service companies are extremely busy today. Take a look at this huge tree trunk right here. That actually fell on that garage right there off of Clintwood Drive. A neighbor tells me a woman just bought this house last Tuesday. This is the same street where you just saw that crushed pickup truck. And down the road, a huge tree fell on this home, leaving damage. There is a lot of damage there. The roof is caved in, and so is the front porch. Neighbors say three people were inside, and thankfully, were not hurt. Pat Dowd, who lives in Thalia, has lived in Thalia for over 30 years, he says he heard a bunch of loud noises and assumed tree limbs fell on his roof. He came outside to a mess. My neighbor, I walked over here and said, whoa, that's not what I said, but I won't say what I said. Worse than I expected. We always get a lot of shredded leaves and things that are a pain to pick up, but uh, in my backyard, I got some good size limbs I got to cut up. And as for power outages, Dominion, Dominion Energy says crews are working as fast as they can. They are looking at damages and officials say customers in the areas with the worst damage are unlikely to have their lights back on today. That's the latest update from Dominion Energy. Live in Virginia Beach, Allie Weatherton, 13 News Now. All right, well, the storms also made one situation even more dangerous in Chesapeake. You got to look at this picture right there. That's a Chesapeake firefighter hanging off the high rise bridge, rescuing a truck driver who crashed after the wind hit his empty trailer. They were 70 feet above the Elizabeth River. 13 News Now reporter Megan Shin spoke with that firefighter, that brave firefighter. And Megan, how's he doing? Well, Janet, they just got back about two hours ago, so you can still see their truck behind us. They're exhausted, and we know that 25-year-old Justin Beasley says he spent four years on the force, but during his time, he's trained multiple times for situations just like you saw in those pictures, even off of the Jordan Bridge, which is higher. And so he was saying that the most nerve-wracking part of this whole situation for him was being so close to the tractor trailer that was tipped over the side. And to bring you up to speed, we know that all of this started shortly before 
before 9 o'clock this morning when the Chesapeake Fire Department got called to that tractor trailer that jackknifed in the westbound lane of I-64 with the driver still inside. Chesapeake firefighters arrived at the scene first. While additional fire departments and towing companies showed up to help, Chesapeake firefighters used rope to lower Beasley over the bridge and lift the driver to safety. Trying to hold on and then if you let go, you're swinging, you know, so it was it was wild. We signed up for it and anybody in my position would do the same exact thing. So. And all the rescue took about an hour and a half. The driver is safe and is expected to be OK. And coming up on 13 News Now at 5, we'll introduce you to what the battalion chief has to say. Megan Shen, 13 News Now. Oh, amazing. All right, Megan, thanks for that story. And 13 News Now anchor Philip Townsend is broadcasting from home tonight. And Philip, you're looking at other problems today's weather caused. That's right, Janet. At the height of the storms, thousands of people lost power. That's partly because of downed trees like this one at an apartment complex in Virginia Beach. Dominion Energy tells us that about 100,000 customers were in the dark at one point this morning. Most of those in Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Portsmouth and Chesapeake. Now, some customers have their power back on tonight, but Dominion crews are staying busy out there. More than 60,000 people are still waiting on their power to return. All right, those trees didn't just mess with power lines either. They blocked roads in some spots. Viewer Christine Spute sent in this video from Kemsville Road between Indian River and Providence. A few guys had to get out and work together to pick up a tree laying across the road this morning. Good job, though, out there. Mm. All right, making sure you're ready for any storms by following the 13 News Now app. It can give you alerts when there's rough weather in your area, and you can track storms on the radar. The app is free to download. And we're also keeping you updated on the pandemic. Let's look at the latest numbers. There are more than 5,700 cases of COVID-19 in Virginia. Over a thousand of those cases are in our area. And at least 149 people have died from the virus in the Commonwealth. North Carolina is dealing with about 4,800 cases and 86 deaths around the state. 120 of those confirmed cases are patients from Northeast North Carolina. Now, this afternoon, governors from both states states sending uh, updates about their response efforts. 13 News Now anchor Brian Farrell is here with the latest. And Philip, let's start off with Virginia's governor. Ralph Northam said state leaders will be getting some of their information from the University of Virginia. Northam said UVA is putting out modeling data that is specific to the state. Up until now, a lot of our information is becoming or has been coming rather out of the University of Washington. The data from UVA will include estimates for when we'll see a peak in cases and how our hospitals will handle it. It also predicts how social distancing is working. Northam says the model show that now isn't the time to ease up on it. But this model also demonstrates that if we lift the stay at home order or social distancing too soon, if we try to rush to get our lives back to normal, the number of cases will spike higher and earlier. North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper just wrapped up his news conference a short time ago. He reminded people stores will have new limits on the number of customers they can have inside them starting tonight. Janet, back to you. All right. Well, tonight, a change in the way you file for unemployment. The number of claims has skyrocketed since the start of the pandemic. Now the Virginia Employment Commission is no longer requiring workers to use pens to file weekly claims for benefits. 13 News Now investigative reporter Evan Watson explains why this should help filers get benefits faster. Last Tuesday, we reported how many Virginians said they were delayed in receiving benefits because they were delayed in receiving their pins. Now, VEC is changing its system so workers don't have to wait on a pin to then file for those continued or weekly benefits. Still, thousands of Virginians are filing for unemployment each day in Virginia, sometimes waiting hours to talk to representatives. Furloughed worker Derek Bowie says his first claim wasn't processed correctly, and after multiple days of calling to check, he was told to file another, resulting in missed days of benefits. He says the system needs to be more robust, and he worries about thousands of people who are missing out because of systemic error. The enormity of this situation, this pandemic has changed the way we live, and the, the amount of uh, claims being you know, applied for is just enormous. And I know that it's putting a strain on systems that were probably never intended to handle the volume we have. 
but it was just disappointing to me that they acknowledged to me that they had a system problem that couldn't handle the volume and that basically I lost four days of benefits. Bowie says he should receive his first uh, period of benefits on Wednesday, but at this point he's not very confident. Now VEC did add about 20 workers to answer this influx of calls last week, and VEC tells me they're also sending out automated texts now to let people know that their claim has been received. Reporting live in Norfolk, Evan Watson, 13 News Now.